We probably have this reputation of being wild and crazy. When people find out that I live here, they're like, wow, you live there? People may not know who I am, but all I have to say is, oh, I'm Tim from the Big Gay Frat House. And then, you know, they're all over it. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, Big Gay Frat House. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you're the one who, and then fill in the blank. I think some people think it's definitely a fun place. You know, most of the time, it's just like a normal house. Our name means something, so that when we throw an event, people will be curious, they will have heard of us, they'll feel familiar with the product, if you will, so they might come to the event. Then when we do our parties, that's, that's when it's totally different. You know, we got name recognition is the most major difference. We started doing events once a month this year. Um, in a format called Girl Drink Drunk. So we did a whole series of fundraisers called Girl Drink Drunk. Tim Gullickson said, I want to do, start doing smaller fundraisers. It was um, the brainchild between um, Trauma Flintstone and my roommate Tim. The way I like to describe it was, it felt like you were being dropped into the middle of a B-52's video against your will. They kind of collaborated on that and came up with the concept of really um, supporting the artistic community, bringing in drag and non-drag performers. The win-win of the situation was the drag performers could come in, or the live performers, I had a lot of regular live performers, that would come in and they could do three numbers in a night, they would get to hang with the audience, they would get to develop an audience from there, as well as give to the cause that was there. They always have people that want to come and party there too, and there's always people that are supplying the, the entertainment, so it's always great fun. We work really hard with the organizations that we work with to make it an easy plug-in kind of experience for them, where they don't have to do all that much. Uh, but take the money and staff the volunteer positions during the event and clean up afterwards. And it was quick and easy. I mean, it was like no work for on behalf of the band. You know, we had alcohol donated so we could have an open bar, um, which meant that you know we could actually be competitive. You know, you could spend twenty dollars and come here and drink, or you can go to a bar and spend twenty or thirty dollars at the bar. So you know, it's you know here people were spending that money and it was going straight to charity, which was really cool. We were able to raise, what was it, 17000 And uh, of course, anytime you have entertainment, liquor, good cause, fun, it works well. One, two, three, and... Well, the San Francisco Lesbian Gay Freedom Band started 30 years ago. It was John Sims who, who was our founder, and he, he had the idea that what could be wrong with the marching band, because there was so much prejudice and bigotry against gays and lesbians. So at that time, he wanted to be able to show that, that we were just like anybody else, which we were. And so he started a marching band, and from there, I mean, people came out of the closets with their instruments, and, and everybody got together and, was, and started to performing. We have people that have been in the band since 79, and uh, people that have just been here within a year. So it's always a great place to come and play music. That's the kind of stuff where you, you really get to connect with the community and make something bigger than yourself and promote the kinds of things that you want to see happen in San Francisco. People who open their house and have fundraisers, I mean, it's almost unheard of. If there are people do it, Donna Sachet does it, some people do it, but um, not, not so many and not kind of like what we're doing. I mean, it's pretty wild. With all the good we've done, uh, we have neighbors who don't appreciate it. As far as house parties go, we're pretty darn responsible, but I'm sure some of them don't like the noise. There have been complaints and we're temporarily shut down. Well, I'm not sure of what their future is because of the standings they have with their neighbors. Boys, if you're watching this, I hope that all the problems are resolved with the, um, the permits and everything. Do our neighbors love it? I don't know. Probably not all of them. You know, I mean, it can get noisy and we do our best to you know, shut things down at 11. Well, we do end our events early. Music is off by 11. Um, I was hoping that the neighbors would be a little more uh, sympathetic, but it is hard. I can understand. They are in a residential area. It is a home. Will there be future events here? I hope. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, maybe that's where they need to go to, not having the big blaring music and the big blowout parties and everything. They may want to go for more wine and cheese kind of, but still being able to do fundraising for the different groups. That would be really great. The spirit of the Big Gay Frat House, I think we're all in agreement, we want to continue on. We'll certainly still have functions here, but uh, regular large parties are very destructive, even with the most respectful crowds. It's just the nature of large numbers of people. Like a good question is, how do you repair all the damage after the parties? I would love to see them be able to put their name as an entity 
on events that don't necessarily have to happen within their home. We're probably going to move away at the Big A Frat House from doing these big events at our house. I mean, It's great that they have a home that they can open up for functions, but let's face it, who wants to live in a theater? I guess we'll be sponsoring events elsewhere. Give money where needed to help something happen or donations of other kinds. Okay, we know we can run an event. We've done it in this private setting. Let's take it into the real world. You know, I would love to annex the whole block and take over the, you know, have a big gay frat block. Live in a warehouse? In my fantasy, we would probably buy some sort of like a warehouse. Oh. One warehouse. Wouldn't we love to live in a warehouse? It is a lot of work and a lot of wear and tear on the house. And if it would be so cool to be able to just have something that was just set up permanently and we could just do events there. Yeah, like the big gay frat house, if we could find a giant warehouse space that has like those big metal rolling doors where you could park 50 cars and then had living space above it, you know, true conversion project, that would be heaven. Send money to this address. Is that gonna happen? Because then you could throw giant parties and then just hose the floor down afterwards and leave your living space untouched. Probably not, not unless one of us wins the lottery, but um, that would be my fantasy. We're getting into branding the Big Gay Frat House as, as a name, as an entity, as a thing. We want to continue to give back. Um, you know, we sponsored the Miss Tranny Shack pageant and, and uh, and provided the crown for the winner. We have a mailing list of 500 names or so, um, and so we definitely want to be able to use that for organizations to, you know, to go out and prov um, promote events they're having. We're really excited that Big Gay Frat House Productions is going to launch its first theatrical production next year. Uh, which will have beneficiary nights for various organizations. And uh, we also just had a very big fundraiser held at Dan's house, also sponsored by the Big Guy Fred House called Balls Up All 2007. Going out and sponsoring events where we can, using our mailing list where we can, when we have money, using our money where we can, that's what it's going to be. I'm incredibly grateful to the Big Guy Fred House for um, making everyone that came in there feel like they had a special night. They've been really great for the Castro community. A personal thank you to Tim and uh, Kevin for definitely coming out to the city and meeting with us. It's been a good um, supporter of the band and a good friend and in our time of need. I mean, it's a great the guys if you ever met them. And they're just wonderful guys supporting the community. We think back to being poor college students and, uh, and how long we've known each other and we're just kind of in shock. I think they will fare well and I think all the different nonprofits around town will fare incredibly well from their experience. The LGBT community that we're a part of, that we, we work with, you know, the drag performers and the, you know, Imperial Council and all the people that we've, we've interacted with love what we're doing. I think the organizations that we've helped and the people who have come here and performed and know what it's about um, recognize that we're giving something back and see it as um, a charitable venue. And, you know, to me, that's what's important. It's been great. Here